It's fine. Don't worry about it. You're going to tell us who it is. Yes, I'm going to. I will address you. Okay. We are live, so we're just waiting on some people to join us right now before we get started, guys. Okay. I do have a joke then. Okay. I like this joke. Is there anybody watching so they can appreciate um, it? Not that I can see, but that doesn't mean that we do have one viewer now. Haley is watching. Okay. What happens when you throw a green rock into the Red Sea? What happens? It gets wet. <laughs> Uh, I like those jokes that um, have like no, like the punchline is dumb, you know, like the punchline is silly and it doesn't really have a point. Or like it doesn't really like, the question doesn't really have anything to do with it necessarily. Yeah, it's like, yes. <sighs> it is. It's beautiful out today. The seagulls are calling. What? What did they say? Seagulls. Seagulls. I know, I know. There's no such thing as a seagull. No Friends, a seagull. For, for those of you watching, there's no such thing as an actual seagull. There are just types of gulls, and we just call them seagulls because they all look alike. They are bagels and beagles, not to be confused. If you want to know more about birds, tomorrow, oh, 11 a.m. Cool. is our ornithology class. So mm -hmm. tune in to see some bird nerds. The bird spurts. Bird spurts? I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I think all I like for shark spurts. I don't like that one either. That's what Katie is when she did her shark spurts. Shark spurts? Shark spurts. She's a shark spurt. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. you, guys She's have to come, awesome. you guys will have to come put some bird puns for tomorrow. Oh, man. <laughs> no, I, I bet Dave has some. I'm sure he does. He's watching right now, so he'll be able to prepare. Hey, ready for tomorrow <laughs> all right all right friends thank you to those of you who are joining us right now we're going to go ahead and get started hi my name is alex and this is Alyssa, and we're going to be answering your follow-up questions for our video yesterday about our saving and fish farm all right so miss Alyssa, will you start us off um i've got a couple questions for you number one excuse me Number one, can, sorry guys, can fish smell? The question again was, do, can fish smell? So if you're asking, do fish smell? Yes, they smell fishy. Um, can fish smell? <laughs> yes, fish can smell. They can also hear. Um, so I know we talked yesterday in the video about some of the senses that fish have. Obviously, if they have eyeballs, they have sight. Um, we talked about the lateral line, which is like a motion detection sense for the fish so kind of an extra sense that they have that we don't have uh, but they do have a sense of hearing um, even though we don't see their ears like we see our ears so our ears are what we call external ears which means we have something on the outside of our ear canal that shows where our ears are and this helps funnel sound into our inner ear fish do have ears but they have internal ears so you don't see the exterior it's actually just a small opening usually that leads to the inner ear and they are able to pick up sounds underneath the waves um, they also do have a sense of smell so fish do have nostrils um, and some fish actually have a very very good sense of smell um, and we'll talk or Alex will talk a little bit more about one later but um, one that I like to talk about when I think about fish being able to smell is the clownfish. Um, so clownfish actually have such an amazing sense of smell that baby clownfish, if they do get displaced from the reef where they were born, they're actually able to find their way back to their home reef using their sense of smell. So the whole concept of Finding Nemo, where he gets lost, he can't find his way back home. Um, I know that wasn't really his fault, he got picked up and put into an aquarium, but <laughs> In real life, if a baby clownfish did get lost in the ocean, it would actually be able to find its way back using its sense of smell. That's good to know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's very neat. Um, Alex, what is the smallest fish since we're talking about Little Nemo? Mm -hmm. So the smallest fish that we have is a dwarf pygmy goby, and that is about nine millimeters long. So it's kind of hard to picture, but it's roughly the size of an acorn or a peanut M&M. Um, if you're a candy fan like I am. So they're very tiny. Um, and then since we're talking about the smallest one, we might as well talk about the largest fish. So the largest fish we have um, right now is the whale shark. 
and that gets about 33 feet long. Um, that's about its average. And whale sharks are in fact sharks, and sharks are fish. Um, they are not mammals, they're, they are a fish, and they're part of that family. So. Very neat. Um, and on that note also, do eels happen to be fish? Eels are fish. I know that from looking at them, it can be a little confusing. But if we go back, and if you haven't seen the video from yesterday, you can check it out on the Facebook page. We kind of go through the characteristics that you need to be a fish. So an eel is a vertebrate, it has a backbone, it's cold-blooded, um, it has scales, even though the scales might look slightly different on an eel than they do other types of fish. Um, it has um, a lateral line and it has fins, even though those fins may be modified. So just like sharks may have a little bit of a different form than other kinds of fish or even stingrays, stingrays are fish as well, um, and seahorses. Um, so you sometimes have to look at the fish and you have to realize that maybe those pectoral fins look a little different depending on the type of fish that you're looking at. But eels are in fact fish. Um, they fall into the category of bony fishes. And um, just like their cousins, the clownfish and the lionfish and the trout and the salmon and all those other good fish, they are fish. Um, and one more follow-up question about eels. Uh, so many of us have seen The Little Mermaid. And if you've not seen The Little Mermaid, I would encourage you to go home and watch The Little Mermaid. Um, is it true that eels conduct some electricity? There are some species of eel that have an electric shock. Now, not every species of eel. Um, the most common eel that you'll probably see in this area um, could be a moray eel um, or a zebra. Or what's the other one? It's got another... Uh... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a leopard. Um, now, these eels do not produce an electric shock. So if you were out in the ocean right now and you saw an eel, you probably would not be running into an electric eel. So no worries about that. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. All right, I think that's all we have. Um, if you guys have more questions, you're more than welcome to put those in the comments. Um, we love getting to hear what you guys think about our videos. And if you want to know something more, we are here to help. Um, please be sure to tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. because we are going to be switching gears completely. We're going to be getting out of the water, drying our feathers off, and we're going to be talking about ornithology um, with our director, Dave Green, who is a huge bird spurt. That's bird expert. Um, and so we're really excited about that. We hope you guys will join us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.